If I hit this button, uh -huh. boom, the whole program's gonna start. Okay, well hit it. All right. Smoke medical. We eat every day. The following thoughts on Hoppy Hour represent Brian Hoppy and Pastis. Listener discretion is advised. Live from Tampa Bay, you are tuned in to Hoppy Hour. He's the voice of a generation that got screwed by the baby boomers. Welcome back to Hoppy Hour. Hoppy Hour. Hoppy Hour. Hoppy Hour starts in four, three. Two, Hoppy, Hoppy, Hoppy. This is Hoppy Hour with Hoppy. Ah. Ah. Doubt it, never worry about the dollar. Need a source or trending topic. Be the hottest, search about us. Competition microscopic, never copied. I'm a giant rolling weed up, now we flying. H O P P E H O P P E H O P P E. You already know Hoppy Hour in the system. This is Hoppy Hour. I am your host, Ryan Hoppy. Hanging out with you and you. And don't think I forgot about you for the next hour to two hours. You can always call me, 856-49-HOPPY. That's 856-494-6773. You can tweet at me, at Ryan Hoppy Radio. You can always email me, ryanhoppyradio at gmail.com. Today is a new era in Hoppy Hour. So we are now on Patreon. If you search H-O-P-P-E Hour and H-O-P-P-E Radio, it is the third thing that goes down. So we do about three to four shows a week. One of the shows will be on the Spotify feed for the Hoppy Radio feed. And the other ones will be on Patreon. Now, if you're listening to this on the Hoppy Radio feed and you're going, that doesn't make any sense, well, what I'm doing is I'm doing half off of Hoppy Hour. For the shows that are exclusively on Patreon, I'm doing about half of the show on Spotify. And then like mid-sentence or mid-segment, I'm just going to cut it off and it's going to have something that's going to be like, well, now go to Patreon to hear the full shows. It's like I'm giving a girl just a tip. I'm teasing you guys. But for all the info on that, go to my social media at Ryan Happy Radio. I will post a link to the Patreon I already did. And we will start that from now on. Also, tomorrow on Happy Hour, I expect this segment that I'm going to tell you about to get a lot of coverage. The one and only Tom Myers. Comedian Tom Myers will be calling into happy hour tomorrow. We have absolutely, positively, so much to get into, but... It's time for Hoppy's Inbox, only on Hoppy Hour with Ryan Hoppy. So recently, I've been reading the messages that I'm getting on these websites after the exposure in September. We had a record amount of listens in September, and I appreciate it. And I got a few messages here that are positive. <laughs> Gotta love some positivity. Mm -hmm. A decade ago, give or take, I found Ryan Hoppy on social media and was immediately intrigued by him. He has progressed quite nicely in the interviewing skills that he has in the intervening years. He is a throwback to the early 2000s style of radio while making it his own. I can't wait to see what the future holds for Happy Hour. I can tell you the future is Patreon. Mm -hmm. Also, here, I absolutely love this podcast. It's a blast from radio's past. Ryan has nailed the early 2000s shock jock style similar to Rod Ryan in Houston that I grew up listening to. That's what the person says. 
It triggers years of memories growing up listening to morning drive time radio. From the sound drops to the references, it's hilarious on its own, but made so much better by the style in which it's produced. Wow. You don't even you don't even have to kiss me before you screw me. That is the nicest thing I've ever heard. And then the last one, of course. When you have love, you're gonna have hate. Fake outrage, lowbrow humor, hypocritical, and overproduced. These are the these are the reasons why I can't stand the happy hour. His mm-hmm adds another layer of annoying to this show. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm hmm. People love or hate the mm hmm, but trust me, it's not going away. Mm hmm. <laughs> So last week was Hurricane Helene, and um, I got out pretty lucky. I just lost uh, air conditioning. I'm hoping it's fixed by now. My apartment's taken a little while to fix it, but they all listen to my show, so I'm going to be complimentary. I know they'll get it fixed. They have a lot to deal with in that apartment complex. I'm not saying that as a good or bad thing, but there's a lot of tenants there. So I know I should be priority number one, but I'm not. In my mind, I am. But my air conditioning has been out. And let me tell you, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls of the gallery, it's very weird when your electricity goes out, or your AC, rather, because it makes you realize that when you had the AC before it went out, that it's pretty awesome. You think about the 1800s and how people probably were sweating all the time. And now we have this huge box that we put in our apartment or our house and it makes things cool and it's just you realize that you are very grateful and very lucky to have the things you have because when something like a hurricane comes through and takes something that you have you go i think i'm going to appreciate it for the end of time mm-hmm. okay ladies and gentlemen boys and girls this next rant is not about anybody specific kind of but there is this new trait no how do i say this i've noticed recently ladies and gentlemen boys and girls that a lot of people talk behind other people's backs now when i say this to you ladies and gentlemen boys and girls of the gallery you're gonna go Oh, well, Ryan Hoppy, you talk about celebrities on your show, so are you any different? But I'm talking about public figures. So I go to this Kava bar, and I record happy hour there, as well as at the Personify Studios brought to you by Topher Morrison in beautiful St. Petersburg, Florida. So I have two places I record at. And last week I was recording at the Kava bar I go to, and this dude complains Oh, I gotta use the 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 room to take a phone call, even though this person always puts phone calls on the speakerphone. And the one time you want to use the room, I'm using it. And then when I was done with the room, he then goes, "Oh, is the room?" No, he goes, "Oh, is the room available?" And I go, "Yeah, it is." And then he takes the phone call outside of the kava bar. And the funny part was people alerted me that he was mad that I was using the room, but then doesn't say it to my face. And it's just the boomer generation. It's not all of them, but there's a lot of boomers that are very judgmental against millennials and it's bitch energy. It's not likable. You know what else is not likable? I saw this headline here. (laughs) Oh, man, this infuriated me 10 out of 10 mad. Some things I'll see in the world, and I'm like, I got to talk about that. Because I have a Google Docs um, app. So I copy and paste all the headlines that I see and all the videos that I'm going to play. Right now I have about 25 to 30 tabs open. And some of the news headlines don't make me as mad as the other ones. But this one is one of the most disrespectful hack 
lame, pathetic things I've ever heard. And let's just begin at square one of this issue. That there has never been a time in this world that Rob Schneider has ever been funny. Rob Schneider is lucky that he is friends with Adam Sandler. Adam Sandler is known to be a very good friend and a very good guy. And without Adam Sandler, Rob Schneider would be nothing. His sitcom on Netflix was not very funny. He's a deadbeat father to his lesbian daughter. Or at the very least, I think she's bi, but she's into women. And then, Dikembe Mutombo, rest in peace. No, 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 no. That was the shot blocking joke. If you don't watch the NBA, you don't get it. But Dikembe Mutombo dies. And he's literally one of the greatest guys ever. He was like a world ambassador, probably top three shot blockers of all time. Great on defense, known as a lovable guy. I saw he died at 58, and it made me really sad. I love Dikembe Mutombo. He's just cool. I would have loved to meet him. I would have loved to interview him on Happy Hour. He dies of brain cancer. And King James, LeBron James is tweeting about it. The NBA is tweeting about it. And it's all, man, rest in peace to the legend, blah, blah, blah. And then you got the hack, the no-talent piece of garbage known as Rob Schneider. Who, I'm not saying every conservative is bad or good, but he represents what I don't like about the conservative party, which is the absolute brainless nonsense that he spews whenever he goes on Fox News or whenever he's on social media. He's one of those anti-vaxxers. He's one of those, I believe in the Bible, even though I shun my own kid. He's just a scumbag. And I saw on Reddit, yeah, you believe what you see on Reddit, but somebody said one time they saw him at Whole Foods in 06 and he was yelling at everybody. And I'm like, yeah, you're a short little bitch. Of course you would. And now this opening intro to this segment of me talking about Rob Schneider, you're going, but what did Rob do? Rob tweeted this. There was a tweet from Dikembe Matambo from about... Six months ago, or maybe a year ago, it says this. Actually, I'll play it for you. It's right here on Happy Hour. This is ridiculous. The world is not the same as it was yesterday. A lot of things are changing. The only way we can move on to be healthy is by being vaccinated. We need to help each other. Make sure each one of us understands the importance of vaccine so we can live in a better community. We need to wash our hands. We need to educate each other. And we need to wear a mask. So this is from three years ago. We cannot ignore the importance of wearing a mask. So he tweeted that three years ago. And what is that little bitch? That hack, that no talent loser. Oh, the animal was so funny. The way you were crazy, Rob, because you're so wild and crazy that you tweeted out and you retweet that video and you go, rest in peace. I'm sure this is just another coincidence, but I took a pass on the jab and I'm not going to let anyone I know and who will listen get it either. And then he goes on to say, that's all he went on to say. So this guy. Rest in peace to Dikembe Mutombo. He dies of brain cancer. Not a natural causes where some people might say it's because of the jab, because of the vaccine. But this hack, this no talent loser makes it about the vaccine. And it's like, that is just why I despise the Republican Party. I don't like the Democratic Party either. But literally, it was just a vaccine and every conservative freaked out because they don't like being told what to do. Because a lot of the conservative party is a bunch of hacky bullies that behind that hide behind the religion and go, well, God told me to do this. No, you're just making God make your opinions available, if that makes sense. Like, God didn't say that gay people are bad. You're just saying you don't like gay people and that God said that. It's nonsense. And the same thing goes with the jab. This literally is a video from three years ago. And you tweet this out? 
and you say this is not another coincidence? He died of brain cancer, you moron. You know what this is? A lot of these hacky comedians do this all the time. Kevin Brennan, who I do think is funny, he made a joke about Matthew Perry when he died, and Ari Shafir, who I don't think is funny, made a joke about when uh, Kobe died. But I'm telling you, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, a lot of these hacky comedians that are not happy with themselves, they don't like when someone who's beloved, like Dikembe Mutombo, dies. And that everybody's going, oh my God, it's so sad, it's so sad. I was at the DMV and I saw the news and I was immediately upset. They don't like seeing that somebody who was a good person is upset. So they're bullies, they're losers. And they want to bring people down by going, oh, it's because of the jab. No. It just really bothers me that Rob Schneider has a platform for his nonsense. I've often said, however you are as a father describes you as a person. And frankly, we know enough about Rob Schneider to know that he's a scumbag. Happy hour. Happy hour. RyanHoppyRadio.com. Happy hour will be right back. Whenever we're going outside, um, we all I smell is poop. As a reminder, if you don't feel like listening to this next song, you can skip over it. But Ryan Hoppy of Hoppy Hour takes pride in his selection, so stick around, folks. Now she'll go home. But what that got to do with me? As long as you're straight up with me, I don't give a damn who you see. But when I'm back in town, spend some time with me whenever your man is not around. Let me be the one that'll hold you down whenever your man is not around. Let me be the one that'll hold you down, hold you down. I'll be the one that'll turn you, turn your frowns around. Cause you can be yourself with me, no need for front and sucking in your stomach. No need for sucking your stomach, knowing them words you can't breathe. Loosen up just a little bit, I'm the one you need to chill with. When you need you some of that real, ooh, wait till you see my later. We'll talk about it after the first time. You might not wanna be without it. It's a reason you cheating on it. Compare him to me, I doubt it. I'm Don Blaze. We can go somewhere private and see about it. And you know that you know it's wrong. You know that it's feeling strong. On the low, we can get the song if you be my Mrs. Jones. Don't mean to change your name, but I'm gonna call you Mrs. Jones. Mrs. Jones. See, we both know what's wrong, but baby, we can get the song. Get the song. Relax and let it flow. Let it flow. Nobody has to know. And we got a thing going on. Let's keep this on the low. Don't mean to change your name, but I'm gonna call you Mrs. Jones. Mrs. Jones. See, we both know what's wrong, but baby, we can get the song. Get the song. Relax and let it flow. Let it flow. Nobody has to know. And we got a thing going on. Let's keep this on the low. Tell you what you missing You miss them hugs and kisses You miss excitement at night And you miss excitement at night And girl, you don't feel the same And he steady tripping, ain't he tripping, ain't he tripping, tripping, ain't he And I'm gonna simply change it See, I can taste your cherry pie before I slide inside See, I miss Jones and cause they lonely and they do some time I read between them lines I see that you be crying Cause he ain't even trying So I'm the one to ease your mind Girl, you ain't fooling me Your man ain't who he used to be And plus, girl, he ain't cool as me Filthy riches who can treat you just like the Queen of England. So when you're ready for some freaking, you ain't gotta leave them. You can, you can be my Mrs. Jones. Don't mean to change your name, but I'm gonna call you Mrs. Jones. Mrs. Jones. See, we both know what's wrong, but baby, we can get the song. Relax and let it flow. Nobody has to know. And we got a thing going on. Let's keep this on the low. Don't mean to change your name, but I'm gonna call you Mrs. Jones. Mrs. Jones. See, we both know Let's get busy, baby, take it off Make it wiggle when you walk Labels gonna call the law Cause I'm about to break you off Got kids, lock them out Send them out with your spouse Make it rock when it's soft Wanna see you cry the wild Me and you, let's have a ball Make it hot like Arkansas Snatch the phone out the wall Let me see that monkey paw Dip it low, ride it slow On the bed, on the floor Up and down, there we go Round and round, yeah, you know Breathing like some animal Find the 
camera strike a pole Girl, let's take a lot of those When we done, take some more I know you tired of creeping But now you know you cheating But you with me because you like the way that gay is eating You know it feels good But we both know it's wrong This what it is, girl To my Mrs. John Your name, but I'm gonna cause you to miss you. Oh, sure. We both know what's wrong, but baby, we can get the song. Relax and let it flow. Yeah. Nobody has to know. No, they don't. We got a thing going on. Let's keep the song. Got it. Don't mean to change your name, but I'm gonna cause you to miss you. We both know what's wrong, but baby, we can get the song. Yeah. Relax and let it flow. Nobody has to know. We got a thing going on. Let's keep the song. Oh, it was Little Rock Players with Mrs. Jones. Ray Max. Happy hour will be right back. Oh, yeah. This following segment has been brought to you by the best Kava and Kratom around. At Mitra 9. Mitra-9.com. And at checkout, use keyword Hoppy, H-O-P-P-E, to save 20%. Did you know that Ryan Hoppy got a vasectomy? Well, now you know, and we aren't even sure why we told you. Welcome back to Hoppy Hour. Hey, this is Lex from the Lex and Terry Radio Network, and we are now ready to name our successor, Ryan Hoppy. Hoppy Hour. Hoppy Hour. Ladies and gentlemen, here it is. The most listened to radio show on the planet. Other stations are tuned in too. Yo, it's Hoppy, yo, well, Ryan Hoppy, same name. Flipping thoughts, quick, a sharp wit, no shame. Airwaves, lit, circus, energy, insane. Hard hitting topics, can't forget the fame. The HRPPE radio flow. Tune in quick, better know where to go. Hoppy with the mic, steal the show. Wild and unpredictable, vibes about to blow. All around the line, best smile, what you say? Hoppy's on the ground, won't let it slip away. Big laughs, big truths, oh, yeah. every single day. Keep the dial locked, this is where we play. H-O-P-P-E, radio flow. 856-49-HOPPY. Steal the show, what? 856 856- Four nine four six seven seven three. Late night vibes. You can tweet at me at Ryan Happy Radio. Different, but it's all the same. Always email me. Ryan Happy Radio at gmail.com. H-O-P-P-E radio flow. Tune in quick, better know where to go. Happy with the mic, steal the show. Wild and unpredictable vibes about to blow. Vibes about to blow. Julianne Huff is clapping back at critics who body shamed her after sharing a bikini video. But let's be honest here. You don't look healthy at all. I know women are obsessed with being skinny. They want to fit into their dress. They want to be able to do this and that. But man, I prefer. I prefer a thick girl over a really skinny girl. Like when a girl's really skinny, it really creeps me out. In a September 29th Instagram video, Julianne is seen enjoying a spa day while sporting a bikini and going back and forth between a sauna, red light therapy mask, cold plunge, and trampoline. She looks like she's 80 pounds. It's like very unattractive. Like I'm sure like she's bony. It's gross. Despite her relaxing day, social media users were quick to voice their opinions in the comments. Yeah, I'm surprised I didn't comment on it in the comment section. Oh, wait, I'm doing that now. With fans writing, I'm concerned. Are you okay? She does look sickly. It's not attractive. I don't get in the modeling world why they think that's a good look. Everybody was like, oh, Ashley Graham's fat. I'm like, no, she's perfect. Another adds, she needs to eat some milkshakes and cheeseburgers. Yeah, totally. You look horrible. I'm sorry. But Julianne didn't let the comments go unnoticed. Yeah, it says here in the title, she claps back. 
Why? Because you know it's true. She responds by sharing a video of herself eating a burger to her Instagram stories on September 30th. And That looks like the grossest burger, by the way. Ew. Ugh, it looks like actual crap. Writes, quote, for those telling me to eat a cheeseburger, this was on September 17th. The and the burger's all like juicy and like dripping. It's disgusting. Where'd you get that burger from? <laughs> Premier day of Dancing with the Stars. And the 36 year old has more to say in the post comment section. Oh, really? Adding, I don't usually address comments like this. But, but you realize it's true. But I'm going to say a few things about this video. Mm -hmm. She says, quote, My body has never been healthier. Oh, really? You don't look it. By the way, they're showing the, uh, like, she made like a paragraph post, which is about like a hundred million words. Women do this all the time where if they're talking about an ex or they're clapping back at haters, they write a whole essay and it's like, you know, no one's reading the whole thing, right? Macklemore did that last week when he was chanting F America. It's like, nobody's reading that. She says, quote, my body has never been healthier. Yeah. I was full of inflammation in my 20s and had a marker for an autoimmune that I addressed and committed to over a year and a half ago. Is that what anorexia is called now? I've frozen my eggs over the last few years, which also shifts the body fluctuation. That's a gross sentence. I've never been healthier or happier from the inside out. If you're truly happy, you don't have to let us know that you're happy. You know what I'm saying? If you're letting us know, you're not. Grief, loss, sadness, and fear also get stored in the body. Mm -hmm. And we hold on to that in different ways. Oh, cry me a river. I just don't get how women think that's a good look. I get if you have that type of body where you can literally eat a whole buffet and you don't gain weight, that's different. But so many girls, they starve themselves. It's like, you're fine. It's crazy. I've seen it. I've dated it. It's like, you look fine. And I know it's body dysmorphia and it's a mental illness, but it's like, you want to be able to tell that girl, you look great. It's insane. I saw this headline. And this also is insane. No! Happy Hot Topic! This morning... We are wishing happy birthday to former president Jimmy Carter. He is turning 100 years old today. I love how years ago when he was president, people would have not celebrated his 100th birthday if you would have brought that up. They would have been like, he's the worst president ever, as I've heard a lot of people say. But time heals all wounds. Maybe if Biden lives to 100, he'll be a good president. He is turning 100 years old today, and our yeah. senior national correspondent, Steve Olson Sami, has more in Atlanta. Good morning, Steve. That was a big sentence from Michael Strahan. Has more in Atlanta. Good morning, Steve. You hear this? Wait, Michael Strahan? Senior national correspondent, Steve Olson Sami. I got the Mike Tyson lisp. Has more in Atlanta. Good morning, Steve. Good morning to you, Michael. No question, this is a day that many people just a few years ago weren't sure that we would see. Yeah. Here's to a happy birthday to former President Jimmy Carter, who continues his reign as the oldest living president by turning 100 years old. Hell yeah, happy birthday, Jimmy Carter. I don't know anything about you, but I have a saying. If I'm bored, you're bored, so we're gonna move on. Unfortunately, this person did not live to 100. No! Happy Hot Topic! What motivated me to reach the top as far as the, the all-time hit king and, and how I went about it and, uh, and uh, how much fun it was. and uh, I reached for the sky from day one of my baseball career. Legendary baseball player Pete Rose has died. He was When I saw that, I was like, oh, man. 83 years old. 4192 has got to be the greatest individual moment of my career. But then there again, uh, out of all the awards I won, uh, the three I cherish the most are my winning World Series rings. The MLB's hit king died Monday. Reports saying he was found in his Las Vegas home by a family member, though a cause of death has yet to be revealed. Yeah, he definitely had a gambling problem. Hey, I'll tell you right now, there's, there's no feeling like winning. I mean, uh, you can 
win all the all-star awards or the batting championships or the Cy Youngs mm. or the player of the weeks or player of the months but when you bring that World Series uh, home to a town that you represent boy it's really a good feeling. Pete nicknamed Charlie Hustle for his play on the field was with the Cincinnati Reds, Philadelphia Phillies and Montreal Expos throughout his 24 season career. I do the same thing day in day out. I just try to be a consistent player, fundamentally sound player. His gambling ultimately ended his time with baseball, where he was banned from the game. But he retired as one of the all-time greats, with a record many see as impossible to beat. The fact that he's not in the Hall of Fame, all those nerdy baseball writers need to get over themselves. They screwed that up. 4,256 hits. He literally should be in the Hall of Fame, but because he gambled, I get it. I get that he messed up, but all these baseball nerds, I've seen it in the sports media, specifically baseball writers, they're such dorks. They think they're so important, and they get such like a little power trip from inducting people into the Hall of Fame. You look at the NFL Hall of Fame, the Pro Football Hall of Fame, it's a little harder to get in, but they're a little lenient, and everybody in their best friend makes the uh, pro basketball hall of fame but the baseball hall of fame they always wait until people die to get them in like ron santo from the cubs if they put in pete da pete davidson if they put in pete rose into the hall of fame after he dies then that is a disgrace they need to stand by their opinion and not put him in the hall of fame because if you're going to wait till he dies to put him in the hall of fame you are a scumbag stand by your words you baseball nerds I think most of your longevity records uh, that have been beaten in the last five years will be hard to beat in the yeah. future. And I, I don't say that because I don't think anybody can reach uh, my, my 4,200 some hits. That is a good prediction, Pete Rose. Okay. Now, about 15 years ago, I was a fan of Modern Family. The first three to four seasons were pretty funny. It was pretty much a great show. The way they promoted gay rights and blah, blah, blah. Da, da, but over time, it kind of got the office syndrome of becoming too corny, too sentimental. Like to me, when Jim and Pam began dating on The Office, that was the end of The Office because I think Jim Halpert's a douchebag. And the fact that he was able to get the girl, I liked when Roy was dating Pam and Jim didn't have her. And the same thing happened with Modern Family. As the kids got older, it got less funny. But without Sarah Highland's manager, she would not have had the gig. And I see this headline here. Sarah Highland, who plays the daughter, the older one, she's getting sued. Her manager says, you owe me modern family money, and the manager wants a 10% cut. Sarah Highland is cutting out her former manager from his cut of her modern family paychecks, at least according to a new lawsuit. The modern family star is being sued by Richard Conisberg, which is the most manager name ever, who claims he served as her personal and professional manager for 15 years and helped her land a breakthrough role. Typical Hollywood. You get the big break, and then you forget about the people that got you there. In the lawsuit obtained by TMZ, Richard says Sarah unceremoniously fired him in April in what believes is an attempt to get out of paying him his 10% commission on a couple lucrative projects he helped Sarah land. For starters, Richard says he has a longstanding agreement where Sarah would pay him 10% of all the money she made during her time as her manager. And he says she was paying him 10% of her modern family royalties until she fired him. Richard says when he got axed, Sarah told him he would no longer be paid commission for modern family and only get 10% of the theater production of Little Shop of Horrors. What a dirty, rotten person. I thought she was so attractive because I was a horny 16-year-old when I was watching that show and I thought she was so hot. But she seems like such a bad person. Richard is going after Sarah for damages, and he wants a declaration from the court that Sarah is obligated to pay him 10% on all the money she makes from projects she lands during his tenure as her manager. TMZ reached out to Sarah's camp. So far, no word back. That doesn't surprise me. It happens all the time in Hollywood. I've hung around comedians that literally blew up in Hollywood, and then they don't return your text. 
And a lot of people, when you bring that up, you, you sound bitter, like, oh, you're not included in the squad or the, you're not included in the whole thread or whatever. But it's just the thing. Once you become really big in Hollywood, you think you're untouchable and you just think you're better than people. And Sarah Hyland forgot about the person that she was in 2008 when now one person knew who she was. And all of a sudden, Modern Family explodes on the scene, and it's one of the biggest, best sitcoms of the 2010s. You know, dating her, it's never her fault. Sarah Hyland seems like the type of person that I'm perfect because I was on a revolutionary and a very funny show, so I'm better than you. Can't stand her. You know, like when you have a thought in your head that a person might be a bad person or might not be a nice person, but you want to give them the benefit of the doubt and then they do something to prove you right and you go, I was right the whole time. <laughs> 856 49 Happy. It's 856 494 6773. Now, I thought Russell Brand had a very funny radio show in the 2000s. He was kind of doing a British Howard Stern thing on BBC Radio, and it was very good, and all the shows are online. But the last, I'd say, 10 years, I have found Russell Brand absolutely, positively insufferable. There's nothing funny about him. And he has all these creepy allegations about his past. So you know what he does when he has creepy allegations? is he gets baptized and starts hanging around the MAGA crew and believing in God. That's the problem with religion, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, is that people, when they become religious, they think they are untouchable. They think they are better than people that aren't religious. And they use it as a cop-out to get out of doing things. So right here is Russell Brand talking about getting baptized. And I find this utterly fascinating because you're just dumping your head in water. You have no proof that the water does anything. And you sit around thinking you're better than others. Utterly ridiculous. Mm -hmm. How can we ever understand with the conscious limited mind that God himself came down to earth and was sacrificed that we may be redeemed and rose again? That yeah, you know when he got in trouble with the... Uh, whole allegations in his past that uh, his manager was like, you know what the cure is? And Russell's like, what? And he's like, become religious. We may have eternal life with our limited consciousness. It There's no eternal life. I don't think there is. Do you really think Kobe Bryant, Abraham Lincoln, my dad, whoever's listening right now, whoever you know that's dead, you think they're up above us right now, hanging out, going, oh, I'll see you guys soon. Nope. Ridiculous. Absolutely not possible. ridiculous. But when you open your mind to it, when you believe in it, you experience a peace that, as they say in Philippians, or Philippians, passes all understanding. There he is with the Bible. He literally has the last page open. <laughs> He's not reading it. I mean, he is, but it's like LeBron James when he would have books at press conferences and was like, uh, uh. Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again, rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation by prayer. And you know the girls that you allegedly did things to when those alleged things were happening, they were praying that the Lord was near to make you stop. Petition and thanksgiving, present your request to God and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your heart. Dear God, can you please make Russell Brand funny again when he was in Get Him to the Greek and was funny when he was the host of the MTV Awards or whatever the show was in 2012? Because I remember Opie and Anthony listening and making fun of it. Can you please go back to when you were funny, Russell Brand? Because this whole grifting, reading the Bible thing is nonsense. And your minds in Christ Jesus. Mm. When we think about the peace that passes of all understanding, we can see it's hyperbole and superlative. It's a really big peace. So he pretty much went from being a shock jock to like a Bible jock. It's so fake. Like it's a really good leather sofa. It's a leather sofa that passes all understanding. 
Jesus is like the original Gary V, the original Tony Robbins. Actually, I like Tony Robbins more than Jesus. It's just the original motivational speaker thing where it's like, oh, well, you know, I'm just going to say a bunch of words and you're going to listen because you really hope that things are going to be okay. Mm-hmm. But this is not hyperbole or superlative. This is a piece that goes beyond subjective reason, that goes beyond the limitations of human consciousness, of the individual mind, and reaches out into the realm of the Savior, Creator, Redeemer, and Master and Lord. I- if I'm God or I'm Jesus, I'm creeped out by how many people bow down to me, man. It is weird. It's the Almighty God. He's up there helping us. Really? Make groceries cheaper. Yeah, I'm, I'm waiting, God. Get us better presidential candidates in America. Uh, if God's so real, why did a lot of people have to lose their items in uh, Florida? Oh, it's a part of God's plan. I look at this planet and I go, I think God needs to come up with a new plan. Just being honest. Happy hour. Happy hour. RyanHoppyRadio.com Happy Hour will be right back. I'll kick you in the nuts and we'll call it a day. As a reminder, if you don't feel like listening to this next song, you can skip over it. But Ryan Hoppy of Hoppy Hour takes pride in his selection, so stick around, folks. My nigga Webbs, go ahead and kick this thing off. Underdog, nigga. Ow! Ow! Underdog, nigga. When I'm present on the scene My broad cook me breakfast turkey bacon with some eggs Love her cause she make me money You love what's between her legs That's the difference between a player and a simp You can tell it's webs from the swagger and the limp The dome that she gave me afterward was immaculate If you guess we both came then you would be accurate Now a nigga out the door Grab a dutchie from the stove Filled it up with potent dro and did the only thing I know We break bread at the table Nigga, 
by Shay and me, me. Got a verse from Torch and GP. By the scoop of flow from CC. Then it's back on the grind, back in the stool. Get right back to the money. You chasing these hoes, purses and clothes. That's why you broke, you dummy. The day I'm having is great. Pockets full of that spiller from weight. Fetty that paper we gotta make. Fly head to toe, make them haters hate. Me and Flo ride it as major king. Hit a razor ball, hit a razor stake. I'm why yourself, who you sneak a dad. Still on them, obey the names. I'm the new nigga out that you heard about. Young villain straight from the dirty side. These fuck niggas I ain't really worried about. That tough guy should've just worried him out. No stop my grind, no stop my shine, no block. Got it. No stop my pay. I don't hate on no one, just get mine. That's the real nigga. We way. break bread at the table before bubbling. Save the bread, I love bread. So the money stay. Pass the butter. Oh, sure. Faithwallethiphop.com. Oh, sure. I'm fucking with my nigga Webs. It's yeah. Big Chuck. Pope uh, Entertainment. Yeah. Ah, whatever. It's just going on and on. I'm like, we get the point. Happy hour will be right back. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. This following segment has been brought to you by the best Delta 8 CBD honey around at dzbzhoney.com. When you go there at checkout, use keyword hoppy, H-O-P-P-E, to save 20% on the best honey lollipops, honey sticks, and a jar of honey. However the hell you want to get high, just go to dzbzhoney.com. And use keyword hobby. Now, something completely different. Son, where'd you find this? On dating apps, he's six foot nine, but in reality, he's six foot eight and a half. Happy hour. Happy hour. Ladies and gentlemen, here it is. The most listened to radio show on the planet. Even the other stations are tuned in too. Ryan's tall like the sky Six for nine, he's fly From Chicago to the Bay He'll say Pete, he'll stay Talk of love and fame Dating life's his game News on stars he spills With laughter filled Happy hour, all you need Rich and Ely, take a seat Ryan's got the groove Happy hour makes you move What's going on? A cat by the side 856 49 Hoppy That's 856-494-6773 You can tweet at me at Ryan Hoppy Radio can always email me with every tale. Ryan Happy Radio at gmail.com. Celebrity world exposed. Happy hour in your souls. No! Happy hot topic! Does Travis Kelsey have a new biggest fan? Fans of Taylor Swift haven't been in love with his ex-girlfriend showing up at Travis's games. And now she has something to say about the hate. It's Kayla and Nicole making it about her? That's because she's an irrelevant, out-of-touch, beautiful woman who thinks, oh my God, I'm so cool because I dated I dated Travis. No one cares. Move on. It's been a year since Travis Kelsey and Taylor Swift hard-launched their relationship, but mm. some Swifties haven't totally moved on from the NFL player's past romantic history. That's because you Swifties. And I'm going to make a video of this on YouTube, so I know you're watching on YouTube. You Swifties are a cult. 
you Swifties claim that men are too obsessed with Trump. Not all men, but a lot of Swifties that are liberal make fun of MAGA because they bow down to Trump. You bow down to someone that probably wouldn't care about you if you met them. Yes, there was life before Swelsea, including Kelsey's relationship with Kayla Nicole. Do you have a type? Ew, yeah. And I'm trying to get away from it. I'm trying to run the other way. That past romance was recently thrust into the spotlight after it was reported that Swift wouldn't be attending the Kansas City Chiefs' then upcoming game against the Los Angeles Chargers. The second game in a row, Swift would be missing. But who. Yeah, that's a problem. And we'll get to that in a minute. But I think they're broken up, but they're just waiting to announce it because she's probably already making songs about it because there was a report that they broke up and they probably don't want that to be the way the news breaks. So they're prolonging the breakup so they can break up on their terms. Watch it be like um, a joint Instagram collaborator post and they'll lock the comment section. You watch. And then the next day, it'll. I can see it right now. A music video where Taylor Swift is playing in a red jersey. Who was attending the game in LA? That's right, Nicole. One person took to X to sum up the situation, writing, Kayla Nicole will be attending the game tomorrow, but Taylor Swift won't. Swifties on Reddit going crazy because they can't find a route that fit their narrative. No, she wasn't in Kansas City. No, she isn't going to the game. Yes, they broke up. It looks like mentioning both Nicole and Swelsey breakup rumors in the same sentence was an open invitation for Swifties to drag Nicole into the mud. But here's the thing. The whole basis to me, when I think of Taylor Swift, is that it's women empowerment, it's defending yourself, it's the fact that everybody that Taylor's ever dated, it's never her fault. Oh, it's never her fault. Her fault. I bet her fart smell. But what I'm saying to you is these women that listen to Taylor, that get mad about Taylor, that defend Taylor, they don't like when men treat them badly. But you're reciprocating and you're giving that energy, let's say, even in the comment section on my videos, the Swifties get mad. I go, you're literally being a bully. And if you're obsessed with Kayla Nicole, like I'm talking about it because this is my job. It's funny. But if you're going there writing mean comments, you're no different than the quote unquote man that you broke up with because of Taylor's music. You're also a bully because the response was indeed swift. One person replied with a photo of Kelsey's ex-girlfriend and wrote, you think he'd really want to go back to waking up next to this wreck of a face? When an ex-user called the- Listen, anybody who said that, you're a heterosexual woman that doesn't know what is attractive. Kayla Nicole may be a clout-chasing imbecile with no talent, but she's a hundred times better looking than Taylor. A hundred times out of a hundred the person out, they replied with a montage of what appear to be screenshots from an Instagram video where Nicole wasn't wearing makeup and sarcastically wrote, quote, very pretty. But, the, but when it's done to Taylor, no, you can't make fun of Taylor. You Swifties are a bunch of losers. It's insane. Well, that's all it took for Nicole to enter the fray and fire back with a pointed message. Retweeting the post with the makeup-free pictures, Nicole clapped back with, You will never make me hate me. Hang it up, bookie. This Hell yeah. That's because the Swifties are a bunch of women who can't find the right man and are not able to look themselves in the mirror and maybe realize that they're the problem. So they want to blame everybody else. They get it from their cult leader known as Taylor, who literally probably has a bigger body count of men she slept with than Kim Kardashian. She's got a long dating history, but it's never her fault. This isn't the first time Nicole had to address haters. When Kelsey was first linked to Swift, fans naturally nosed around his past love life. And Nicole unexpectedly found herself in the crosshairs. During a panel at Advertising Week in New York City in 2023, mm. Nicole described the storm of hate she'd started getting out of nowhere. But it's in the past. You should be grateful that your hero Taylor found her perfect man who totally didn't cheat on her while she was touring in Australia. You think a football player that's full of adrenaline and has CTE, you don't think he slept with anybody else? You think he just like waited around and was like, I'm not going to get laid for 80 days? These people you worship are not your heroes. They shouldn't be.
simply because she dated Kelsey in the past. She explained, This was just kind of like a media storm, if you will, and my name was being brought in it every day. My comments, my DMs were flooded by it and the narrative. I had no control over it at this point. In response to all the negative attention, Nicole posted an Instagram video encouraging women to believe in themselves despite what anyone says. Yeah, you don't ever see Taylor posting that. It's never her thought. She's so perfect, the way she's had so many boyfriends. So you're too much, too provocative, too boisterous, too outspoken. Too pretty. You're a hundred times prettier than Taylor. And in the same breath, tell you that you're not enough. Nicole went on to say that you don't have to feel alone and that there is help available. Ex uh, thank you for the heads up, Nicole. Explaining why she decided to expand the scope of her message beyond the trolling specifically directed at her, Nicole said, I have a lot of eyes on me, but I feel like it's not a singular experience. So I wanted to really encourage myself, but any other woman that might feel the same way. Ah, oh, whatever. <sighs> the Swifties, man. It is such a cult. It's a mental illness. <laughs> but yeah. Taylor Swift, who makes absolutely, positively, everything about her, doesn't go to a concert or, I mean, Travis's football game when there's cameras everywhere. Yeah, something's up. And you saw them at the uh, horse race where they're fake dancing together. It's just a fake relationship. Do you really think they would have really dated if they weren't famous? She is not an attractive person. And every Swifty who's attracted to men who doesn't know what it's like to be attracted to a woman goes, she's the most beautiful woman ever. She's not. She's not. If she was humble and cute and maybe had a personality like, let's say, Selena Gomez or something, then maybe. Trust me, a lot of guys don't find her attractive. And then I see this here. Everybody's upset at Antonio Brown on Twitter. If you are mad at Antonio Brown, then you're falling for the point of Antonio Brown's Twitter. Antonio Brown, former wide receiver for the Steelers and then the Buccaneers, walked off three years ago during the game. The dude's a sociopath, has CTE, everything's wrong with him. His Twitter account is kind of like a meme page. It began with him saying offensive things. And now that he says homophobic and transphobic things, Elon Musk gets really turned on by it. And the algorithm always shows me Antonio Brown stuff. But people are upset about this tweet that Antonio Brown put up when it's a meme account and it's pretty much known that he has like an intern posting the memes. I don't think Antonio Brown would know how to make a meme. Travis Kelsey, or this is what uh, AB's tweet says, end quote, Travis Kelsey needs some black pee, bro washed, hashtag CTESPN. And all the Swifties got mad, and I go, that's exactly what he wanted. He wanted you to respond. Nobody's talking about Antonio Brown anymore. He's not going to be hired at ESPN. He's not going to be hired at NFL Network. He's pretty much unhirable, and he burns every bridge, and he's a deadbeat dad. But when you get mad about it, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, you're giving him power. It's not that hard. And then there's this here. This is from like three years ago before Travis Kelsey got whipped. This is him saying how his girlfriend doesn't need to be at every game. No! Happy Hot Topic! If you're dating a professional athlete, I do not believe, at least for me, that you have to go to all the games. 2016 Travis Kelsey revealing his expectations when it comes to his love life and football career. I live life to the fullest. I try and, you know, spread the love. And this that was back when he was dating Kayla. Yo, 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 talking like this. Mm -hmm. This resurfaced interview with Who Say, the NFL star shared how he felt about his girlfriends attending his games. And Trav, he's totally okay with them missing a few. If you're dating a professional athlete, I do not believe at least for me, that you have to go to all the games. I mean, yeah. all there's there's eight home games, eight away games, plus playoffs. I don't even expect my parents and my friends to make every single game. Whatever. It's an old clip, and they're posting that because the media is freaking out. Because the media does not want them to break up because they give them stories and clout. No! Happy Hot Topic! Next up is Travis Kelsey, the NFL superstar, has been snatching up TV roles recently in the new Ryan Murphy series. Have you seen the trailer for no. Grotesquerie 
Oh, my gosh. Anyway, that's another thing. Here's the next uh, Chelsea, uh, Kelsey gig right here, hosting Prime Video's new game show, Are You Smarter Than a Celebrity? Oh, wow. Hot off the press, we have the first trailer just dropped. It's a classroom packed with stars, including comedian Nikki Glaser and former... Oh, I bet Nikki Glaser kind of does some flirtatious sexual jokes because Nikki Glaser, everything's about sex. Mm-hmm. NFL wide receiver Chad Ochocinco and a lot more. You're an offensive player. Is yes, that that's me, yeah. And I'm an offensive comedian. I <laughs> get it? Because she's offensive. I'm not saying Nikki Glaser's not funny, but it's just like, she's a one-trick pony, brah. Every Wednesday, get your head I'm proud of you. in the game. Good job. What was your major, Travis? Criminal justice. If I'm going to go to school, I might as well learn how to not go to jail. <laughs> <laughs> that was so funny. It's literally porn acting. And everyone's fake laughing. They're like, Haha, football player, try real hard. This guy's everywhere. I mean, <laughs> wow. Podcast. Uh, he's everywhere, but we're going to stop talking about him today. Do I have any more Travis Kelsey headlines? No, that's about it. Man, I cannot wait to talk about their breakup. And I know that sounds messed up. Like, I'm not rooting for their breakup. But um, that breakup is going to be legendary. Mm-hmm. That breakup is going to be interesting because a lot of people are going to be saying, Ryan Hoppy was right. Ryan Hoppy was right. That relationship was a sham, which I'm going to give you some advice for life. You should always be saying Ryan Hoppy's right. Mm -hmm. Eight five six forty nine Hoppy. It's eight five six four nine four six seven seven three. You can tweet at me at Ryan Hoppy Radio, and you can always email me Ryan Hoppy Radio at gmail.com. This show is for the hardworking average Joe and Jane that grind in life. I don't care if you live in the U.S. or if you live in the U.K. As long as you're listening, that's all that matters. We will be right back on Hoppy Hour after this. Do not touch that radio dial or that streaming device. However the hell you're listening to my show known as Hoppy Hour. We'll be right back. Hang on. RyanHoppyRadio.com. Happy Hour will be right back. Whenever we're going outside, um, we all I smell is poop. As a reminder, if you don't feel like listening to this next song, you can skip over it. But Ryan Hoppy of Hoppy Hour takes pride in his selection, so stick around, folks. Maybach music. Turnpike on some real shit, I'm a pothead Please don't blow my high, man Look into my eyes, and It look like I'm from Thailand I am smoking on that gas Life should be on Cinemax Smoking on that OG and that double R I'm real relaxed I smoke so much kill, they call me killer Man, I'm on that strong, I'm on that strong Bodybuilder Like that shit and pass it My white girl on that acid But me, I'm on that kush That kush don't you? And I got a big bouquet of Mary Jane's flowers. Yeah, Mary Jane's flowers. Mary, Mary Jane's flowers. Don't play fuck with me. And I got a big bouquet of Mary Jane's flowers. Mary Jane's flowers. Mary, Mary Jane's flowers. That kush. 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 Mary Jane's flowers. Big bubble bouquet and by the look 
Look at my paint, man, it's a wonderful spray Sucker tryna fuck my high up on a sucker free day I told that sucker park your whip cause this a sucker free lane Harry Hoover, Hussein, kick ass weed, Wu-Tang Bees for big on the Bentley, can't squeeze through lanes Raw papers in Jamaica, eat some Aggie roller acre I be hippie blitz, trippy sticks, activate the vapors And this anthrax wax, give you asthma attacks I'm a smoker, use a choker, gon' and pass that back Lighting weed, that's my dope style Eyes lower than my profile This ain't hit your lung, your car both out And I got a good bouquet of Mary Jane's flowers Mary Jane's flowers, Mary, Mary Jane's flowers And I got a good bouquet of Mary Jane's flowers Mary Jane's flowers, Mary, Mary Jane's flowers That kush, that kush, that kush That kush, that kush, that kush Mary Jane's flower, Mary Jane's flower, Mary Jane's flower. Huh. Cushion and swishing, couldn't be sweeter. I'm talking P80 mine, the TAC off the meter. I spark them up in the theater. Huh. Clouds so thick, heavy on real estate. House show bitch, black bottle for boss. I'm burning like Biggie, Bob Molly and Ziggy. My niggas, we run the city. It's a very thin line, you can candy paint mine All I want is Chevy's and the best cause I can find 60 in the bank, another hundred on my mind When we started out with Reggie, we were barely getting dimes We were barely getting dimes Now all we fuck is dimes Oh, do you? That cush, that cush, that cush, that cush, that cush, that cush. And you know we on that cush, that cush. Oh, really? And you know we on that cush. Oh, sure. That cush. Mary Jane's flower with that cush. Mmm. Nothing but that cush. Got it. We ain't smoking nothing but that cush. That's the plan. Don't pass it if it ain't that cush. That cush. That cush. But Lil Wayne, what if it's black tar heroin? Happy hour will be right back. Just kidding. This following segment has been brought to you by the best barber in all of the Bay Area. Rich Keeley, Master Barbershop at richkbarber.com. 4545 West Kennedy Boulevard, and that's in Tampa. Sign up for an appointment at richkbarber.com. And when you get there, because you can't just show up and go, hey, can I have a haircut? No, you got to go to richkbarber.com. And then when you get there in person, sign up after. You know what's funny? Any other radio show would edit this out and make this a perfect live read. We're doing no voice tracking here. Let me do a quick rewind. When you sign up at richkbarber.com and you go to 4545 West Kennedy Boulevard, you will save $10 when you name drop me. There we go. All right. We're going to come back on Hoppy Hour and continue this party right after this. If a Chicago accent and Florida man went on a wild weekend and ended up with a kid, it would be Hoppy Hour with Ryan Hoppy. Tune in for the chaos. He's the voice of a generation that got screwed by the baby boomers. Welcome back to Hoppy Hour. Hoppy Hour. Hoppy Hour. Ladies and gentlemen, here it is. The most listened to 
listen to a radio show on a planet. Even the other stations are tuned in too. Oh, uh, we've gotten so worked up today talking about how I despise Rob Schneider and I despise Swifties. So let's get some positive vibes here. Happy hour in the air Feel the vibe everywhere Kick back in your chair Life beyond compare Breaking news Happy Buster Posey, former San Francisco Giants Introduced as new president of baseball operations That makes me feel old Because it feels like it was just two years ago That he was the rookie Oh, oh, yeah. oh wow yeah, Happy hour everywhere Also here, female high school teacher, 28, who had sex with a 15-year-old student is unmasked after she's found guilty as court hears the way she groomed the boy. Now, if this was a Gen X shock jock morning show, they'd be like, I wish I had that teacher when I was 15 in the 80s. <laughs> it's a mental illness. And I really think pornography really sped up the process of people thinking it's hot. Like, I'll be honest, when I was in high school, I had a tutor who was helping me with math. But I'm not very good at math. I'm good at six times six, 36. I remember when I worked at the bone, a hundred out of a hundred times, I would beat the audience in math, which doesn't say much about that audience. Actually, it says a lot. But what I'm saying to you, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, is I'm not the best at math that's not multiplication, addition, subtraction, or division. And my math teacher, my tutor was named Miss Mitch, and I had the biggest crush on her. A side note. The identity of a former trainee teacher who groomed and sexually assaulted a 15-year-old student can be revealed after a gag order restricting publication of her name in the school involved was revoked by the courts. Petra Shasha, age 28, was found guilty of sexually abusing, grooming, and indecently assaulting the boy in the ACT Supreme Court last week. Her name had already been reported at the time of her arrest in February 2022, which marked the end of the relationship she cultivated with the then 15-year-old. The court heard Shasha first formed a bond with the St. Edmunds College student while working as a pre-service teacher for three weeks at a school in late 2020. So this is when it's 2020, everyone's worked up. Let's have sex with underage kids. Weird. Now, if a guy does this, all of a sudden, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, he's crucified. But when a girl does it, oh, she gave the guy, she gave the 15-year-old the time of his life. You're all weird. Despite being 24 at the time, Shasha and the boy grew so close that the teenager believed they were a couple. Yeah, that's a problem. Prosecutors told the court that she methodically groomed the young boy by giving him lifts, designer clothes and other gifts and transferring him money so he would take part in a sexual act. After one day of deliberation, the jury found Shasha guilty of persistent sexual abuse of a child, supplying pornographic material to a young person, grooming and committing an act of indecency as a child. However, she was found not guilty on charges of separate grooming and committing an act of indecency on a child. Her victim told police that Shasha brazenly spent time with him in public and had made plans for what to do if anybody knew. We always knew, and we always said, if we see anyone we know, just keep walking, the victim told the Canberra Times. We don't want anyone to see. Why are you in public, you idiot? Like, I know if you're having sex with a 15-year-old, you're kind of an idiot, especially when you're a beautiful 24-year-old at the, at the time. But yeah, let's just go in public. That sociopathic pedophile must get off on that or something. Like kind of like a rush, almost like shoplifting or something. Hey, let me be seen with an underage kid. Can you imagine if a man did that? Can you imagine if a man was out seen with a 15-year-old girl at Hooters or at a local sports bar? Come on now. 
Spike Lee gets into bizarre trash-talking altercation with WNBA star Kelsey Plum at Aces Liberty playoff game. I can't stand Spike Lee. That guy thinks his crap don't stink, even though he's a fan of the very average team known as the New York Knicks. Here is the clip. Stories about Fred and Ted, the big and little dog. And she said, it's not about the size of the dog. It's about the heart. And she pounded her chest very strongly. So as... Yeah, the media is definitely overplaying this. She just said to him something on the sideline. It wasn't like a huge fight or anything. Again, I don't like Spike Lee, but that's not that big of a deal. Netflix loses millions of subscribers after boss backs Kamala Harris, which of course was one of the dumbest things you could possibly do. Because all the easily triggered MAGA, the same MAGA that says that liberal snowflakes are always triggered, they were triggered when Netflix gave money to the fund for Kamala Harris's presidential campaign. You're a bunch of babies. I saw people that worked for Patrick Bet David and Valuetainment. They're like, I'm unsubscribing to Netflix. What the hell's wrong with you? You guys think it's completely okay when somebody supports your candidates and you're all about free speech, but when someone does it for their candidates, all of a sudden it's wrong? It's a little weird, ladies and gentlemen. Just being honest. <sighs> I don't know. I don't know what's going on with this planet. Let me see here. Tua Tagovailoa, however you say his name, I need to learn that. He will be returning in week eight. I'm not sure, ladies and gentlemen, that he should be playing football. I mean, your brain can only take so much. You know what I'm saying, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls? And the fact that he still wants to play obviously shows his competitive spirit or whatever. But at the same time, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, it's like, I don't think it's worth it. Maybe it's just me, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. But I think maybe it's time to find something else to do. I might be wrong. 856-49-HOPPY. Let's talk about the spiciness that is Cardi a B. No! Happy Hot Topic! Well, Cardi B has never been one to hold her tongue and... Never! Unless she's given her... And now, Offset is joining her in that, although I guess it's more his fingers that did the talking for him last night uh, when Cardi B was on uh, Instagram... That wasn't the first time he used his fingers. I'm live, and she went on to gripe basically about how the divorce is going. She well, more than the divorce, about Offset. I mean, right. really, this is just- Because she said that Offset was threatening her, saying he was gonna take things back. No, so, so listen to what Cardi said, which clearly triggered Offset. Thank you for my kids, though. All three of them. I don't regret none of them, but I regret you. Ugh. Again, it's that case of, it's never the woman's fault. I don't regret my kids. You're good, daddy. You are right. I regret you. Didn't you used to rob people when you were a stripper? You have no credibility. I'm too good for you. I've always been too good for you. No, you're obviously doing something wrong if you keep sleeping around. And maybe you're not that smart if you keep letting him knock you up. <laughs> you know I'm too good for you. Move on. Why can't you move on? Why can't you move on? It's no fun when, when, when mama got the gun, right? She's insufferable. It's no fun when I'm slinging, right? Wow. Mm-hmm. Shots fired. So, yes. When she, what, by the way, she meant metaphorically when mama's got the gun, right. meaning she's the one calling the shots. Um, and she's referring to you. Now, the comment that popped up there at the end of that was from Offset. And yeah. what he said was, you blanked, screwed, had sex. Um, with a baby inside, tell the truth. I one time hooked up with a pregnant black girl eight years ago, and it's weird. <laughs> You're like, there's someone's kid in there. That kid would be eight now. That's weird. So, so he is essentially accusing her. The insinuation is cheating. However, he cheats all the time. My understanding is they were broken up. Yeah. But obviously, he didn't feel like they weren't divorced. 
That's what happens whenever a man cheats. Because I've been around people that have cheated all the time that are public figures. When they cheat, it's like, we got urges. We got to have sex. But then when the woman does it, it's like, she's a slut. It's like, that's a double standard. It's actually the definition of a double standard. At that point. But they were broken up. Yeah. Ah, whatever. 856-49-HOPPY. That's 856-494-6773. And then we have this from Cardi B. No! Happy Hot Topic! I got some more butt injections removed. Oh, that's good. Cardi B opens up about removing more of her butt injections. The rapper recently revealed how she found out she was pregnant with baby number three in an Instagram Live. And in the vid, she tells followers that prior to making the discovery, she mm -hmm. was in the hospital for multiple procedures. Yeah, that's no good. I'm going to keep it 1,000 with chat. Please keep it 10,000 with us. In January, right after yeah. I shot, um, like what? I went and got surgery. I got some more butt injections removed. Because, you know, it takes rounds to get your butt re injections removed. Yeah. I got some of my butt injections removed. And I also went... Remove. And to fix, like, you know, certain things with of my fibrosis, with surgeon made and everything. Yeah. Cardi's injections were biopolymers, a liquid silicone gel, which doctors have stated can be life-threatening. And I think big butts are nice, but a fake big butt is obnoxious. Could cause a variety of health complications, including fibrosis. That's no good. We're going to move on. 856-49-HOPPY. That's 856-494-6773. No! Happy Hot Topic! Anna Delvey Sorokin is speaking out following her short-lived appearance on ABC's Dancing with the Stars. The convicted felon, who's been a topic of discussion with fans and those inside the ballroom since it was announced she would be joining season 33, spoke exclusively with NBC News about the backlash she endured over her casting and the wild way she exited the competition. You're a fraudster and a con artist. I have no sympathy for you. In an email to NBC, she writes, quote, I feel that the show so obviously used me to drive up the ratings that they never had any plans to give me any chance to grow and only cared about exploiting me for attention. It was What about the uh, people you exploited, honey? Predatory of them to try to make me feel inadequate and stupid, all while I did progressively better, yet they chose to disregard that. E! News has reached out to reps for Anna and the show, but has not yet heard back. Trust me, you're not a victim. Anna and her partner, Ezra Sosa, were eliminated from the show September 24th. I didn't even know that dancing with the really twirly stars was still on. <laughs> and she summed up her experience with just one word when asked her takeaway from her time in the competition. Nothing. <laughs> Anna. <laughs> Sociopath who was cut alongside fellow competitor Tori Spelling and pro partner Pasha, defended her comment on a September 28th episode of Tori's Misspelling podcast. Yeah. They were building me up. It's like, mm -hmm. oh, well. What an annoying voice. Only if you smile more, only if you do like X, Y, Z. Yeah. It's going to Back door. be so much better for you. Mm -hmm. And um, I felt like they put so much effort and... Um, Trying to get me on a show and like make me feel comfortable. Yeah, you're a felon. Just to like eliminate me like this early, and um, I see it. Yeah, like a. Can you imagine dating her and listening to that voice? Vapid. Bit of an embar like of like an attempt. Mm -hmm. uh, of an embarrassment for us. All right, I can't take this. I feel like I'm getting dumber listening to her. To get eliminated before Eric or Reginald, like in a dancing competition. All right. <laughs> You're a criminal. Shut up. Shut up. 856-49-HOPPY. Speaking of criminals. No! Happy Hot Topic! Sabrina Carpenter reveals she may have had a role in Eric Adams' indictment. Yeah, how? 
After online theories start circulating that Sabrina's music video kickstarted the investigation for the New York City mayor, the espresso singer pauses her show at Madison Square Garden and jokes with the crowd, quote, damn what now? Should we talk about how I got the mayor indicted? Or, as some remember, Adams was charged with bribery and wire fraud scheme that allegedly took place over 10 years, according to the unsealed indictment obtained by NBC News news. Prosecutors allege that Adam had sought and accepted luxury international travel as well as illegal contributions for his 2021 mayoral campaign. You look at him and you go, that is a corrupt politician. It's just his vibe. And the singer's 2023 music video may have had something to do with the investigation. Sabrina filmed several risque scenes of her taste video inside a Brooklyn Catholic church. Ah, oh, she's naughty. With approval from Monsignor Jamie Gigantiello. Yeah, you know, the priest was like, please, we haven't seen a pretty girl in years. However, after filming, Gigantiello was demoted and stripped of his administrative duties <laughs> by Bishop Robert Brennan. Ah, uh, that bishop sounds like he's no fun. With Gigantiello adding he was, quote, not aware of the video's inappropriate content. <laughs> Again, Priests will defend other pedophiles, but a girl in a skirt dancing in a church, you can't have that. According to an email from Gigantiello to the New York Times. Oh, the Catholic Church is so weird. Addition it's an actual cult, literally. Additionally, according to the diocese, his demotion, which led to a, quote, broader administrative review of the parish, possibly led to a connection between the parish and Adams. Mm -hmm. Sources familiar with the matter told NBC New York federal investigators issued a subpoena on September 20th to Gigantiello's parish due to his business dealings with Adams' former chief of staff, Frank Carone. And in response to the alleged investigation, a spokesperson for the Brooklyn Diocese that oversees the Williamsburg Parish told NBC New York, quote, the diocese is fully committed to cooperating with law enforcement in all investigations, including of conduct at individual parishes or involving any priests. Yeah, but why do they always cover up the, uh, you know, <sighs> pedophilia? Again, a girl dancing at a church, blah, 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 blah. Oh, it's so bad but uh, a priest ruining a kid's life, whatever. Weirdest religion ever. You're in a room talking to this dude that's hanging on a cross and you're all talking at the same time. Yeah. Definitely not a cult. Not at all. Happy hour. Happy hour. RyanHoppyRadio.com. Happy Hour will be right back. I'll kick you in the nuts and we'll call it a day. As a reminder, if you don't feel like listening to this next song, you can skip over it. But Ryan Hoppy of Hoppy Hour takes pride in his selection, so stick around, folks. <laughs> Sagittarius, birthday November 27. Do it like that until I, I, I end up in money heaven. They be thinking they be fame and the torching them with the bullshit they handing out. Pull the twist to make a wish and blow the candles out. Blow the candles out. Blow the candles out. Sagittarius, birthday November 27. Do it like that until I, I, I end up in money heaven. They be thinking they be fame and the torching them with the bullshit they handing out. Pull the twist to make a wish and Blow the candles out, yeah. pull a all white phantom out I'ma kill him with the pants and the shirt and the shoes and the hat With the shades and the chain and the watch is the reason I be standing now Where ice and spin that cake while I lick the icing off the cake uh -huh. It's twist the B-Day, y'all Come on, everybody, put your brothers, get ready with me Do it like my birthday, do it like my birthday Do it, do it, I do it like my birthday All day, I do it like my birthday Do it, do it, I do it like my birthday Uh, when I get done, she gon' bring me my cheddar 
better yeah, It's just the beginning, it only gets better Now with my hat, hat, now with my shirt, shirt We will never do it like the last day on earth, earth And if you really want to spill on the deal Yeah, we sound like a mug, yeah, fly in the mug Gucci pumps, shoes matching the belt, skirt matching the blouse, chain matching the ring. Yeah, I'm doing my thing. Got, got so many haters. Why is so many hating? Sick like a mental patient. I floss like a dentist patient. This shit testing my patience. This shit ain't working my nerves. I'm getting spinning that money like the first and the third. Laying on gated skin, blowing cushion the wind, just like. Poppin' no tags, the visas bustin' the sack uh -huh. I'ma whip it when I'm gone hard to get up, gone mad Chop, models all around me, so I'm buyin' up the bar yeah. I'm a hood star and I'm partin' like a rock star yeah. On lean, yeah, my pick game meaning you can't upgrade me, mommy I'm the guap, green king, right? Do it like my, do it like my, do it like my, do it like my, do it I do it, I, I, I do it like my birthday Every day, I do it like my birthday Rolling on the 94, looking for them sexy Oh, I'm falling with yeah. Kelly cause I'm a flirt Come on, do it, huh? Uh, I got you, uh, 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 I do it like my birthday, I do it like it hurts Hey, okay. watching these bad, just to do it in the worst way I'm a winner, mama, I am in the first place Catch me on the dance floor, throwing up my birthplace I'm an animal, I woke up on a Monday And subsequently, I ain't go to sleep till it was Thursday This is shot of Patron and blow a bird Get up with a bitch, you can take her home on the first day Burger King, mama, you can have it your way Or I can bring another bitch and y'all can do it her way Hotel room, do not disturb way That's how I'ma do it when I do it like my birthday Happy Hour will be right back My mic was off Oh yeah, this following segment has been brought to you by the best MMA trainer in all of the Bay Area. That being Amir Academy of Martial Arts at AmirAcademy.com. Here's the deal. If you are looking for women's self-defense classes, kids classes, MMA classes, whatever the hell you need, go to 2700 22nd Street North, and that's in St. Petersburg, 727-821-4097. It's 727-821-4097. And AmirAcademy.com. This is also being brought to you by CounselingOnCall.net. Today I spoke to my therapist and I feel very good. If you feel like you need to get your mental health checked, go to CounselingOnCall.net and tell them you heard about it from Happy Hour. This is also being brought to you by WestChasePrinting.com the best printing company in all of the Bay Area on that invoice. Tell them that you heard about it on Happy Hour and they will hook you up. If being a man slut was a podcast, it would be Hoppy Hour with Ryan Hoppy. Hey, this is Rick Rumble from Rumble in the Morning on FM 99 in Norfolk, Virginia. And you are listening to Hoppy Hour with my buddy Ryan Hoppy. Hoppy Hour. Hoppy Hour. Ladies and gentlemen, here it is. The most listened to radio show on the planet. Even the other stations are tuned in too. Oh. 
happy hour Time to laugh with Ryan's power Wacky fun and silly jokes Happy hour loves his folks Happy hour Happy hour With Ryan happy Yeah, he's the topper Grab your drinks and join the crew the Crazy stories just for you Ryan's here to make you grin Let the happy fun begin Happy hour Happy hour 856 Ryan happy 49 happy it's 856-494-6773. Turn it up and do you can tweet at me at Ryan Hoppy Radio. You can always email me, Ryan Hoppy Radio at gmail.com. Happy hours here to stay. Oh, happy hot topic. <laughs> E.T. has learned that Diddy is no longer on Suicide Watch and the... Oh, thank God. I was so worried about Diddy. Father of Seven has been visited by family in jail. Father of Seven, man, Diddy does not know how to pull out. Leading up to his next hearing, October 9th. Our source says Diddy's kids, quote, believe their father is innocent and are disheartened by how quickly the public has turned. Is your father at flight risk? Diddy's three sons have been the most public supporters appearing at both bail hearings yeah. but when it comes to 26 year old christian king combs a civil lawsuit filed in april claims quote the apple does not fall far from the tree that is not good for him he's got to be freaking out a little bit he's the best to ever do it period oh is he period the best to ever take advantage of people and ruin lives proud of you boy christian. Christian is accused of drugging, violently attacking, and sexually assaulting a staff member on a yacht. You just look Christian. at him, and he looks like a dirtbag. Definitely not somebody I'd want my daughter to date. And it has nothing to do with race. It has everything to do with vibes. Denies the allegations, and the case is ongoing. Do you expect him to go, yeah, I raped that girl, and yeah, I violently, I, I violently attacked that person? Of course they're not going to admit to it. Damn. How do All right. That's today in Diddy News. I had to skip over it because mm -hmm, of um, that thing known as copyright. Also breaking just now from TMZ, Diddy allegedly sexually abused nine-year-old boy. Accuser attorney says, yeah, this is just getting darker and darker. I do feel bad for Diddy's daughters because I do think they are innocent. Rich homie Quan died from fentanyl overdose. Other drugs involved, too. He died from a toxic mix of fentanyl, uh, alprazolam, alprazolam, codeine, and promethazine. That's sad, man. Rich homie Quan was a great rapper, and supposedly he was a good dude, too. But a lot of these rappers, man, they just love doing this codeine, and it never turns out well for them. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, So, I didn't even know The Simpsons is still on TV. I loved the first 15 seasons of The Simpsons. Definitely one of my favorite shows of all time. But Conan O'Brien appeared on the show, and I'm about to play it for you. There was a publicity stunt they did where they said it was the series finale, and people literally thought it was the series finale. And I'm like, man, everybody's so gullible nowadays. <laughs> what are you doing? Falling for that. The series finales are in May, not in September, <laughs> going on October. When the hell has a series finale ever been in September? I mean, shows get canceled after three episodes if it's like a bad sitcom on NBC or Fox, but there's never a series finale. People don't think, man. Fox special presentation. Live from the Dolby Mucinex Theater in Hollywood, California. <laughs> The biggest stars of stage, screen, politics, and sports have all come up for this landmark night in television history. A once-in-a-lifetime event, 36 years in the making. It's the Simpsons series finale. They honestly should just end it. Just put it to rest. Get rid of it. Make sure it never comes back. I thought The Simpsons was a good show. Like, I liked it growing up and whatnot. But I'm telling you, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, it definitely jumped the shark. I would say 2000s. 
it should have ended right after the Simpson movie. Like they should have done a series finale in 07. And then what they could have done was have the movie be the finale. So you end the show in 07 and then it ends like that. And now your host for tonight, Conan O'Brien. Thank you. Yes, thank you. It's such an honor to be with you all for the series finale of The Simpsons. I knew I was the right man for the job because I've hosted the last episode of three of my own shows and counting. <laughs> yeah. Not a very funny joke. They should have just ended it. All right, there. Let's be honest here. When's the last time you left at a new episode of The Simpsons? I'm not talking about when you're watching reruns on Disney Plus or if you have cable, you turn on FX or FXX and they show it all day. When was the last time you went, oh my God, The Simpsons is so funny. Although the episode from back in the day of when Homer thinks Bart is gay is pretty, pretty funny. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We're going to move on. And we are going to talk about Naomi. Mm-hmm. Whoa! Happy Hot Topic! Naomi Campbell is addressing her rumored feud with Rihanna. Who's talked about it? I cover celebrity news every day, and I haven't heard one thing about it. That's her narcissism thinking we're talking about it. Weeks after the supermodel and La Roche were accused of shading the Grammy winner with a demure video. Demure. No one even knows what that word means. Naomi is responding to the rumors. The 54-year-old tells the New York Times, quote, Man, black on crack. She looks good for her 50s. I'm not about to let the world pitch two black women against each other. Mm -hmm. We are two women with two children, mothers. Trust me, nobody's gone. Did you hear about that war between Naomi Campbell <laughs> and Rihanna? Not one person. During New York Fashion Week in September, videos began circulating on social media yeah. of Rihanna seemingly walking past Law and Naomi before the show. Yeah, she was busy. To greet former British Vogue editor-in-chief Edward Ennefel. Mm. Additionally, Naomi and the celebrity stylist later took part in the demure trend by TikTok creator Jules Lebron. A 50-year-old doing the demure trend is pathetic. See, we don't go to the shows like the other girls. We don't come with our tatas out or our chichis out. Oh, good for you. You're old. No one would want to see that. Very demure. Very nice. You don't even know what demure is. If I were to ask you, you'd be like, uh. Very cute, see. You don't give too much. You just give a little. Man, I feel like I'm losing brain cells listening to them talk. So we're going to move on. Speaking of losing brain cells. Ahead of tonight's vice presidential debate, it's the hurricane recovery effort that's front and center. <laughs> vice President Harris at FEMA headquarters. Did you guys see, um... Kamala Harris's picture where she's supposedly talking to the governor of uh, North Carolina and she doesn't have her headphones plugged in to her uh, phone, her iPhone. And also the funniest part was there was uh, no paper. She had a white sheet of paper and there was nothing written on it. It was a fake picture from a fake person who's a career side chick. After canceling campaign events out west, promising to help the storm's victims no matter how long it takes. Oh, what are you going to do, Kamala? You can't even fix the border. Okay. I plan to be on the ground as soon as possible, mm -hmm. but as soon as possible without disrupting any emergency response operations. Former President Trump arriving in Georgia with the Christian humanitarian relief organization Samaritan's Purse, trying to make a political issue out of the federal government's response. Typical move by him. They're not being He's so predictable. Everything he does was crazy and edgy in 2016, but now it's predictable. They're not being responsive. The federal government is not being responsive. 
the former president falsely claiming President Biden had refused to get on the phone with elected officials like... Why would you... Like, I know every politician lies, but why would you lie about something that could easily be proven wrong? Georgia's Republican Governor Brian Kemp. Both the White House and Kemp say the two leaders spoke the night before. He just said, hey, what do you need? He offered that if there's other things we need, just to call him directly, which I appreciate that. A furious President Biden says Trump is making things up. Of course he is. His whole lie, his whole life is a lie. If it wasn't for his daddy's money, he'd be nothing. He's a boomer, Elon Musk. He's lying. And the governor told him he was lying. I don't care about what he says about me. Listen, of course you care about what he says. You're talking about it, Biden. If you didn't care, you wouldn't talk about it. Told him he was lying. I don't care about what he says about me. But I care what he, what he communicates to the people in the, that are in need. Yeah coming from somebody who is too old to communicate. It comes as Trump and Harris's running mates, J.D. Vance and Tim Walls, are gearing up for their first and only debate. Oh, that's going to be a snooze fest. Not really. It's going to be J.D. Vance with his small D energy, thinking he's better than everybody, even though he's not. And Tim Walls, that creepy boomer, that liar. They're all liars. In perhaps the biggest make-or-break moment of their political careers. Mm. Walls wrapping up debate prep in Michigan. First-term Senator Vance arriving in New York Monday. He has really bad vibes. Like, I look at J.D. Vance, and I'm like, I don't want to have, if I had a daughter or a girlfriend, I don't want them in a room alone with you. And though Trump has refused Vice President Harris's invitation for another presidential debate. That is the biggest cowardly move ever ever by Trump. This dude thinks he's better than everybody. He's outspoken, but he declined the debate. You're a wimp, brah. Saying overnight he could be open to more. I would love to have two or three more debates. I like it. I enjoy it. But it, they're so rigged and so stacked. So then prove it wrong. If you're so smart, prove it wrong. If you're such a genius, Trump, and such an amazing man, prove him wrong. I don't want to do the, 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 the debate because you came off like an idiot. You're an idiot. Well, the debate stage for the VPs is... All right, I don't need to hear the Today Show doing the opinions. I do the opinions here. That sounded very narcissistic, and I'm just joking. 856-49-HOPPY. That's 856-494-6773. You can tweet at me, at Ryan Hoppy Radio, and you can always email me, Ryan Hoppy Radio. <sighs> at gmail.com all right uh we have this where are you going donald trump is firing back at snl today this is the other predictable 2016 thing trump getting mad at snl who talks about snl besides the liberal media trying to push the agenda no one cares about snl i i think truly in my lifetime Maybe in the 90s, it was like must-watch TV that people probably talked about around the water cooler. I was a kid in the 90s, so I don't remember. I wasn't around for that. But in the 2000s through right now, October 1st, can't believe it's October 1st, 2024, no one talks about SNL. Social media does because all the right-wing nutjobs who claim that liberals get triggered, get triggered over SNL. You're getting triggered over a 50-year-old has-been show. Do you know how silly that is? Day, slamming them for making jokes about the attempt on his life. That is a good point. Because you know if Kamala Harris or Tim Walls or Joe Biden had an assassination attempt, two of them, you don't think uh, SNL would be making jokes about it, do you? Because they wouldn't be. It's ridiculous. We love my rallies, except when someone does a bing bong, bing, bing, bing. That's not a bad joke, I can't lie. Right at me. But do you think if Kamala had it shot at her, did they be making jokes? And watch this. <laughs> As the actor playing J.D. Vance comes to the podium, Trump looks nothing like J.D. Vance. Weird. SNL's a failure. Trump leaves and takes the bulletproof glass with him. Okay. In a All right. <sighs> SNL is the worst. Eight five six forty nine hoppy. It's eight five six four nine four six seven seven three. 
You can tweet at me at Ryan Hoppy Radio, and you can always email me, Ryan Hoppy Radio at gmail.com. This show is for the hardworking average Joe and Jane that grind in life. I don't care if you live in the US or the UK, as long as you're listening, that's all that matters. If you're listening on the radio, I appreciate it. If you're listening on a streaming device after searching Hoppy Radio, I appreciate it. We will be right back. Hang on. Happy hour. Happy hour. RyanHoppyRadio.com. Happy Hour will be right back. I'll kick you in the nuts and we'll call it a day. As a reminder, if you don't feel like listening to this next song, you can skip over it. But Ryan Hoppy of Hoppy Hour takes pride in his selection, so stick around, folks. Turn, turn me up a little bit. When that music World. comes in, it gets loud. loud, loud. Swissy. Yes. This is a You Heard That New World premiere. On Roy, I've been hitting so long, and I'm a big headed boy. Nah, we ain't on HGH, though I might pick up some weight when I'm running through your state. Nah, 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 we ain't on the clear, we on the runway, and back to back legs. This miss no more drama, and Barack Obama, the drama's feel honest. I put my life on these tracks, you act like y'all wanna say me, but I'm you get this. Luckily, my therapy is the I just bear my soul, I don't expect nothing back You all welcome, look, long as you felt I was gon' get my, you know where the hell I'm from I'm from the bottom, so I do this from the diapers Quick and fast, turn the big apple in the cider I do this, I'm a writer and a writer I Spew it cause I'm nicer, but I do this for the lifers I'm a writer and a writer I spew it cause I'm nicer, but I do it for the lifers You welcome See again, somebody so deadly be of the pen. Leave a whole veto, I didn't know who we be in. Big up to Biggie and Pac, I do it for them. Until I reach Kali, I do it for him. Do it for those who can't do for self due to the pen. May these bars reach through your bar. And mine, when Mary sing, it heals your heart. God solely stands filled, you are. Love is a battlefield, we all get scars. Oh, I put my heart in. This is much more than marketed music The reason I got a market to do this Is people going through pain I'm just walking Damn, through Damn, Loki, where the hell you find this one? This ain't no marketed music People going through pain I'm just talking to do it well, Watch the man hopping out of fans. I ain't only teaching. 
taught you a body feast So I taught you how to fish and not let other niggas feed you For Welcome. all of y'all, keeping y'all in hell Just to see you smile and enjoy yourself You are the welcome, you are the welcome, you are the welcome Everybody say Five six forty nine hobby. Happy hour will be right back. Oh, to the yeah. This following segment has been brought to you by the best Kava and Kratom around. Mitra nine, M I T R A dash nine dot com. At checkout, use keyword hoppy, H O P P E, to save twenty percent. This is also being brought to you by DZ, BZ honey.com, the best Delta eight. CBD honey around. It comes in a lollipop, lily lick the lollipop, the wrapper, a honey stick, or a jar of honey. But you gotta go to dzbzhoney.com and at checkout, use keyword hoppy, H L P P E. This is also being brought to you by fortify.com, F O R T I F E Y E.com, the best pre and post workout in the game. And at checkout, use keyword Ryan20 to save 20%. Also, this is being brought to you by the best barber in all of the Bay Area. Rich Keeley, Master Barbershop at richkbarber.com, 4545 West Kennedy Boulevard. And that is in Tampa. Richkbarber.com, sign up and save $10 when you name drop me. Speaking of name dropping me, if you go to westchaseprinting.com, you can get uh, the best person, DJ Tone Tampa, to make you posters, business cards, yard signs, whatever the hell you need. And on that invoice, like I said with the name drop, tell them you heard about it from Happy Hour. Speaking of name dropping, counselingoncall.net. If you need help with your mental health, that's the place to go. Also, this is being brought to you by Amir Academy of Martial Arts at amiracademy.com. I think that's it. We are live from the Personify Studios in St. Petersburg, brought to you by Topher Morrison. Also, if you're looking for the best kava and kratom around, go to the chill room in Pinellas Park. All right, here's the deal. We're going to come back on Happy Hour and talk about a few more things right now. If a radio show was an energy drink, it would be Hoppy Hour. He never holds back, and he speaks his mind. Welcome back to Hoppy Hour. From Chicago to Cleveland to Tampa Bay, you are plugged into Hoppy Hour. Hey, this is Lex from the nationally syndicated Lex and Terry show. And we're here to tell you, we know talent when we see it. Anyway, just wanted to let you know we know talent when we see it. But this is Ryan Hoppy with the Hoppy Hour. Happy hour. Happy hour. Ladies and gentlemen, here it is. The most listened to radio show on the planet. Even the other stations are tuned in too. Happy in the morning. Tune in and you'll see. Oh, really? Ryan Hoppy's got the magic. That's me. Live on your frequency. Eight five six. Forty nine hobby. Eight five six. 
494-6773. You tweeted me at Ryan Happy Radio. You can always email me, Ryan Happy Radio at gmail.com. It's crazy how decent AI is at making music. I mean, it sounds like anything you would hear on Top 40 Radio. Because it's all fake. It's all auto-tune. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I find this next headline kind of funny. My face was like on fire. I yeah. was like, wait, third degree, second, second degree burns? Like, what can happen? Britney Spears is sharing a story about her recent battle with a bad fire. She almost burned down her gym like six years ago. She needs to be nowhere near fire. <laughs> The pop singer is sharing an update on September 30th, detailing a painful moment from six months ago when she was burned by her fireplace. Yeah, she needs to be near nothing, to be honest. It's kind of sad. She's literally a kid. She literally is out of her mind. It's depressing because, like, I root for her, but then she does things like this, and I'm like, you're literally a kid. I think some of these celebrities literally never have a childhood. So, like, they are always the age that they were last at. Kind of like with Michael Jackson and all these other people. I mean, the woman is out of her mind. I was in my room, and I turned the fire on, and all of a sudden, it uh, blew up in my face. Um, it's done it before. And the times yeah, you need you need to not go near it. I did it before. I Is she living with anybody? She needs to have like a Richard Simmons type setup where somebody lives with her. I, I don't know if she's good on her own. I always I quit, so it always gets my security to come in and and um, light it for me. Mm -hmm. Um, because I was scared it was going to blow up. Got it. She goes on to explain that lighting her fireplace on her own led to her unfortunately losing some of her hair. <laughs> Only that would happen. Only that would happen to Britney. Um, but this time, <laughs> <laughs> it's so funny. Almost burning down a house. <laughs> so funny, Britney. I just threw the whole thing in there, and it literally blew into my face, and yeah. it took all my eyelashes off, my eyebrows, and see this baby hair, these baby bangs. This is from basically uh, six months ago. It chiseled all my hair. The 42-year-old adds that she was fearful she may need to go to the hospital following the incident. As for how she handled the discomfort from her injuries, Brittany says this. It happened like 3 o'clock in the morning, and um, it, the pain never went away. It was so, so, so bad. And then, um, so finally I took three Tylenols, which is like... Tylenol is like a really, really big deal for me. Like it's, it's like like a f I get in or something. Mm. But um, I took three and finally I went to sleep. Ah, oh, poor thing. She's out of her mind. <laughs> no! Happy hot topic. Angelina Jolie is closing a legal chapter. The Oscar winner recently dropped her lawsuit against the Department of Justice and the. Brad Pitt should have never left Jennifer Aniston for this imbecile. The FBI over the release of documents pertaining to the investigation into her 2016 plane incident with then-husband Brad Pitt. A dismissal obtained by E! News reads, The parties to this action hereby stipulate to dismiss this action with mm. prejudice, with each party to bear its own fees and costs. E! News has reached out to Jolie's rep for comment but hasn't heard back. Of course they're not going to respond back. Every one of these reporters go, we didn't hear back. They're not going to. The lawsuit was first filed in April 2022 under the Freedom of Information Act, with the plaintiff, listed as the anonymous Jane Doe, requesting the release of documents pertaining to an alleged domestic violence incident aboard a private jet. The plaintiff said in her filing obtained by NBC News that her then-husband had allegedly physically and verbally assaulted her and their kids during... Yeah, there's something that happened there because those kids despise Brad. ...a plane ride, causing them to experience lasting physical and mental trauma as a result of the assault. Yeah, 
Angelina Jolie has spent a lot of money trying to shame Brad Pitt. I'm not saying he deserves it or doesn't, but she has spent a lot of money dragging him through the mud. The allegations in the lawsuit appeared to match an FBI report into a prior incident involving Jolie and Pitt, in which the actress accused her then-husband of attacking her and one of their six children. Oh, wow during a transatlantic flight from Europe to Los Angeles on September 14th, 2016. Oh, it was a transatlantic flight. I wonder uh, what the uh, plane identified as, as a gender. <laughs> that was a lame joke. Uh, we're going to uh, move on. Whoa! Happy Hot Topic! Paris Jackson is sharing the sweet reason Michael Jackson chose Elizabeth Taylor as her godmother. Why? During the first episode of the BBC docuseries, Elizabeth Taylor, Rebel Superstar, which takes a closer look at the life of a legendary actress, the 26-year-old daughter of the late Michael Jackson shares her experience with the Hollywood alum and explains why she believes her father chose Elizabeth to be her godmother. As she states during the episode, I think because I was growing up in the spotlight. There's definitely a part of him that knew that we would have a very similar experience. That's good. 856-49-HOPPY. We got this here. Uh, this is a real headline. Lamar Jackson, I got a salmon sperm facial. Wow. And here's the video on... Why is there no audio on TMZ? Oh, it's because I turned... I'm, I muted the website. <laughs> Oopsie doopsies. There's a lot in the valve. I know. There they are putting this salmon sperm on Lamar Odom's face. Very weird. Mm -hmm. so you're just gonna help smooth out the skin. Yeah, I think yeah, the forehead is a little salmon. Yeah, because when I want to smooth out my skin, forget just doing a normal face mask. Let's do sperm. So we're just creating little channels and we're just kind of gently grinding out That is the most Hollywood thing I've ever heard. Uh, Draymond Green, who I think has ruined the Warriors dynasty. Kevin Durant probably didn't re-sign with the Warriors because of Draymond Green. He punched, uh, Draymond Green punched Jordan Poole and Jordan Poole left. And now we got Draymond Green being the sociopath that he is. He cares more about being outspoken so he has content for his podcast than bringing anything to the Warriors. Um, you know people worry about you. Fans, maybe your teammates. I worry. Why do they worry about me? Well, I am they say because you're reckless and you're a sociopath. That's what black men in America do incredibly well. Okay, that's great. You're a successful black man that makes hundreds of millions. Congrats. But you've also ruined dynasties, you baby. You're a big baby. <laughs> What's the worry they about They worry me? about you. There they are way more people in this world to worry about than me. That I mean, that's true, but that doesn't mean we don't not want to worry about you, and I'm a Warriors fan. But I'm saying, like, you're reckless. We thank you for the four rings, but grow up. That's right. for sure. But we're here now. so We're all here. I don't think you should worry about me. Okay. I'm doing pretty well. If, if oh, are you? Because Draymond says he's doing well. That must mean it's true. Even though you were critically panned when you were on Inside the NBA during the playoffs. And you're obsessed with talking about other people because you're a narcissist that can't look yourself in the mirror. If you would have told me. When I was 13 years old in Saginaw, Michigan, without a pot to piss in. Oh, really? That you'd be sitting here and somebody would say they're worried about you. You've ruined everything. The Warriors have some loyalty for you for some reason. I would have probably told them they were out of their mind. Yeah. You're out of your mind, too, so you would know about things being out of their mind because you can relate to that because you're crazy. You're literally probably mentally ill. And I am mentally ill, so I'm speaking on it from experience. If they, I'd be sitting here and they'd be worried about me. Well, oh, really? Too. They, they want to know. They don't feed They know the team this, needs so why you. why are they worried? Because they know the team needs you. But they don't feed and them. They don't know if you're going to be here. doing this. I'm here. That's great. And I'm sick of that. I'm sick of whenever athletes mess things up, they go, well, I'm feeding my family. Are you winning games? You get suspended when the Warriors are trying to make the playoffs, you baby. Oh, but I feed my family. I'm a very successful black man. Cool. What have you done for me recently? Here, I've been here for 13 years now. If you're going to be here every night. Oh, that's, that's the thing. Radio shows do that. Oh, you've been on your radio for 30 years. What have you done for me recently, Draymond?
Been here pretty much all, every night for 13 years. Congrats. Besides the nights that you get suspended because you want to attack people essentially during games because you're a bitch. Very much so. We all have. <laughs> Look, say something. You're supposedly this outspoken truth man on your podcast, brah. And whenever you do inside the NBA, talk. It's because you know you got proven wrong. We all uh, have. Uh, uh, <laughs> uh, Look, Kevon Looney played 82 games two years in a row, and everybody was celebrating. We all miss games. Yeah, because you're attacking people. You keep getting suspended. I'm always here. No, you're not. No, you're not. And? If you were to look up the word narcissistic personality disorder on WebMD, it shows a picture of this idiot. Suspensions, the, the guideline of getting suspended is, is something that's in place because it's a possibility. Yeah, and you shouldn't be getting suspended. Your temper is so stupid. You hurt your team's chances all the time. That's what people are worried about. It's great that you're a successful black man and that you make hundreds of millions and you came from Saginaw, Michigan. You didn't have a pot to piss in. But what have you done recently but hurt your team? So. So. Enough of him. Can't stand Draymond. I liked him back in the day. He was great. What have you done for me recently? Oh, happy hot topic! Mark is a really good guy. I mean, he, he really is such a good guy. Mm. And that's what makes it hard. Kristen Cavallari is revealing the real reason why she and her boyfriend, Mark Estes, broke up after seven months of dating. Because there's an age gap. And I think that paparazzi, I played it, it's on my YouTube. There's that clip where he asked about them having kids. And I think everybody pressuring them sped up the process. He should be mad at that paparazzi. The 37-year-old becomes teary-eyed as she shares her side of the split, confirming the news on her Let's Be Honest podcast October 1st. It's hard because um, I broke up with Mark because I just know long-term it's not right. That's a decent point. She's looking out for Mark. She's actually cool for doing this, even though it sucks to get dumped by Kristen Cavallari. And it's not because of love lost or mm. something bad happened. Those are the worst breakups. No one cheated. No one was me. Like, no one did anything. And those breakups are always the hardest, I think, because yeah. it's almost easier if the guy you know, does something that makes you hate him. The former reality star went public with a romance with 24-year-old Mark in February, sharing a cozy-looking selfie on Instagram with the caption, quote, he makes me happy. During the course of their relationship, they both encountered some criticism from the public over their 13-year age gap, but seemed to brush it off. Proving there's no hard feelings with the breakup, the Hill star praises the Montana boys' TikTok star and says that one day he'll thank her for the split. Yeah, it hurts right now, but she's kind of right. He's been the best boyfriend I've ever had. Oh, that's got to make all the exes hurt. I just know long term, he needs to experience life, you know? That's true. Oh, he's young. I mean, he is. And I started to feel the age a little bit just with life experience. Yeah, you always feel the age whenever you talk to someone in their early 20s currently on October 1st, 2024, and they're like, I was two years old during 9-11, and you're, you're like, what? I really look at our relationship as such a beautiful relationship. Probably the best relationship of my life. Quite That's good. Well, we're happy for you. All right. God bless older women and cougars. They are the best. They carry this world. Tick tock, clocks a joke, we're playing cruel pranks. Hoppy's hour almost done, feels like robbery and banks. Ryan Hoppy on the mic, dropping wisdom, then streams. Syndicated sorrow, now it's time to shatter dreams. Oh, the Hoppy hour is coming to a close. Radio waves fading like a wilting rose. Laughter and joy dissolving in the air, but we'll keep the rhythm. Oh, life's just so unfair. Eardrums 
was missing hobby life and girls without rings DHX to FM, shout outs hit the street But soon the sound will vanish like shadows in the heat Oh, the happy hour is coming to a close Radio waves fading like a wilting rose Laughter and joy dissolving in the air But we'll keep the rhythm, oh, life's just so unfair Phone lines buzzing, but the laughter's growing dim Eardrums missing, hoppy like fingers without rings DHX to FM, shoutouts hit the street But soon the sound will vanish like shadows in the heat Oh, the happy hour is coming to a close Radio waves fading like a wilting rose Laughter and joy dissolving in the air But we'll keep the rhythm, oh, life's just so unfair Clockwork to a show And now it's time to face the silence Like a TV on snow Riot Hoppy held the mic With humor so divine The void left in our hearts Wider than a canyon line Line Empty speaker silent vibe But coming to an end Like a roller coaster Stopping round the river's bend Hoppy's jokes and jabs These are daily grind Now silence louder than the thoughts We can't rewind Oh, the happy hour is coming to a close Radio waves fading like a wilting rose Laughter and joy dissolving in the air But we'll keep the rhythm, oh, life's just so unfair The happy hour is coming to a close Radio waves fading like a wilting rose Laughter and joy dissolving in the air But we'll keep the rhythm, oh, life's just so unfair Happy hour, happy hour RyanHoppyRadio.com And like that, he's gone. Whenever we're going outside, um, we all I smell is poop. I'll kick you in the nuts and we'll call it a day. Hoppy Hour is now over. <laughs> Happy Hour is now over. <laughs> Game over.